everybody. Welcome to STR After Dark. Today we're doing a super late night one. If you're watching me live, that means you're up at 12.30 a.m., which it's crazy. I just got back from the game. My first game at Golden One Center. Not my first time, though. I went to Paul McCartney, but I got to say, I didn't get the full arena experience at Paul McCartney. I just went down and sat in my seat. Tonight was my first game there. And if you haven't been there yet, it is awesome. There's just, from the second you walk in, even before you walk in, when you see how open that arena is, you know, we're used to Arco Arena, where you'd go on the concourse and then the court was in the middle. There are two separate entities. Not here. It's amazing. It's just like you're in one room with 17,000 other people, save for a couple parts of the arena in the upper concourse. But... I could see how you could theoretically walk into that arena and never sit in your seat and still enjoy the game. It's insane. I don't know how else to put it. You've got to see this arena if you haven't. Um, yeah, Joseph on the Periscope there is saying it's an amazing game. Amazing atmosphere. I agree. It's that was probably one of the funnest games I've been to in a few years. And, you know, we've had a lot of doozies in that time. So that's not saying or that's saying a lot, I should say. Um, where do I start with that game? I guess start with the first half. Um, if there was one weak point to that experience, it was the first half. I don't know what to say. I don't think it was an effort issue. Sometimes they let the ball freeze, but I think they just got a little psyched out. Um, it was ugly. Um, the Timberwolves could not miss in that first half. I believe it was an 11-point game at the half. Um, I was a little worried there for a second. After such a fun introduction, getting to see all the cool graphics they have at this arena, it was... A little worrisome, and then the second half came, and that was a completely different team. I, um, I'm trying to think if there was a turning point, but I think it was just halftime because they came right out. If if I want to get specific, it was when I sat down in my seat about two minutes into halftime. That's when it started. But it, yeah, it was amazing in that se second half. I believe the biggest run was 17 and no. Um someone said they caught themselves looking at the jumbotron the whole time. That jumbotron is amazing. I I don't know how you can make a TV that big that looks that good, but that thing I I would love to have that in my living room. And someone brought up Matt Barnes on the on the periscope there. I almost hate to say this given his past, but I have loved Matt Barnes so far as far as basketball goes. Um, it's slippery slope talking about him, but I was not happy with that signing. And as far as the basketball player on the court goes, he's been amazing. And it, I'm not just talking about making baskets, making plays. He's been amazing as a leader on the court and everything. I don't know if he's turned a new leaf or what, but... Hopefully this is the Matt Barnes we can get. Two out of the three games has been amazing. He looked a little tired in the second one. Um, he had that one play where I forget what the call beforehand was, but everybody started walking back to the other side because there was some sort of out-of-bounds call or foul or something, and he caught Rudy's attention without anyone notice and told him to go towards the basket. And he threw it down court, and Rudy was able to get the easiest two points of the night. And it's plays like that that are huge. They can shatter another team, and they can give your team momentum. We were down 18 points tonight, and we came back and won. Our first time in 118 games that we are down that much. And, oh, thank you. Uh, heuristic lineup, I don't know who that is, but he said he's glad he can finally stare at me on his cell phone. Uh, that's high compliment. Um for those of you on Periscope, I might look like I'm at a weird angle, but I, I do this old school where I shoot on my computer camera for recording and the Periscope's for the live interaction. And 
So uh, the computer has the better angle. I'm I'm trying to think of a less convoluted way to do this, but I appreciate you guys sticking up. Oh, there was a little smoke in the arena. Someone was asking about that. Um, I wish I could tell you what the exact story was. I'm not going to say anything until I know. I don't want to defame myself. If the bottom of my chin was a player, it'd be Oscar Robertson. That's I got a pretty dynamic chin. I I think I think it's a triple double chin. I I won't complain about that. Um, looking at the stats here, though, some interesting one. Um, if someone can tell me Boogie's new average after this game, that would be awesome. But he had another stellar game, twenty nine and seven. A little down on the rebounds, but he. He owned that game. Um, Carl Anthony Towns was, for what he can do, I believe he put up 15 and 6. He was kind of a non factor in some ways. Gorgie Jang, on the other hand, actually had a very good game. That could be part of the reason. Um, yeah, it's this defense. I We gave up over 100 tonight, so we can't say it was all a great defensive game. But we only gave up 38 points in the second half, so. We did have good defense after a less than stellar first half. Though some of those baskets the Timberwolves were making, you would swear we were playing the Splash Brothers. It's Gorgie Jang was hitting it from mid range like he was Tim Duncan. Obviously, Gorgie Jang's the better player, but um, what's older, Matt Barnes or those curtains? Are the curtains old at the new arena? Did they get like thirty six year old curtains? That's a good question. Um, Ricky Rub did, Rubio left the game early. Well, I believe it was in the fourth quarter, actually. But he left the game early, hurt his arm. That was an unfortunate event, especially if he's going to be a king in a couple of weeks. You heard it here first. I don't uh, – please take that with a grain of salt. I got to talk about Rudy Gay, though. Oh, the curtain's at my house. Yeah, this house is 120 years old. It's it's old enough to play for the Spurs. Um, yeah, I don't know if those jokes work as well with Tim Duncan retiring, but I'm going to keep doing them until Parker and Ginobili kick the bucket too. Their careers kick the button, bucket, I mean. Um, Zach Levine, he's one of my favorite young players in the league. I, I love the Timberwolves as a whole. Um, he had a very good night. He's... He's one of those guys, when he's on, he is on. Um, once again, I liked Ty Lawson, even though he did get torn up by Ricky Rubio for quite a while. Um, I still am calling for Willie Cauley-Stein to take Costa Koufos' spot in the starting lineup. I still think he and Boogie are a better fit. Um, someone wants to know how I'm able to periscope from Calusa. What happens, actually, is I recorded this 25 minutes ago. And then I send it to the Pony Express. They take it in a film stock, right? And then the horse rider, he rides all the way to Sacramento. He puts it into a recording studio, and they broadcast it. I'm just guessing what you guys are asking, but that's actually how this happens. Um, I'm not lying. Why would I lie to you? This is Everything I say is the truth. Um... The other person I want to talk about, which statistically speaking, ah, he had a great game statistically too. Well, scoring, I shouldn't say it was a great statistical game. Ben McElmore, 15, I'm sorry, 13 points. I have these glasses for a reason. Um, All three games, he's, the old Ben has reared his ugly head once in a while, but Ben McElmore seems to starting to be confident in himself. And I, I've thought all along that's what he needs more than anything else is confidence. He's got a good jumper. He can defend good well when he wants to, but he lets himself get psyched out very easily. He did it the other game when Kawhi stole it from him twice. And aside from that, I've loved what I've seen from him. He's just there's just a whole new swagger to him. It's not just that he's making his shots. It's he's asserting himself in ways that I haven't seen and Dave Yeager's the man for that. Um, I'm hoping that this isn't just three games 
at the beginning of the season where he's kind of doing it because if he can be this confident during the the whole season he can that's huge for us because shooting guard is easily our weakest position Omri Caspi got some more burn tonight that was fun to see um he had three rebounds it was very valuable three rebounds though um who, who did I miss? I Rudy Gay was just as inconsistent as we've grown to love. He was kind of non-existent in the first half for the most part. And then second half, he was on fire. And it's funny, he just does this thing too where it's not just that his game is inconsistent. It's like he's inconsistent. Like at the beginning of the game, he looks like he doesn't want to be there. And then at the end of the game when we're winning... He is just as passionate as Boogie. He was roaring and doing all this. And speaking of Boogie, he got a little too passionate. Um, he got technical tonight. I didn't care. Tony Brothers is terrible. Um, I was not a fan of the officials tonight. They tried to insert themselves into the game. They had a couple questionable calls. Some that were probably not questionable, but I'm going to call them questionable because... I'm a Kings fan. That's what I do. Um, someone wanted to ask about my life choice of going to lowbrow tonight. It was a great choice. And the the lowbrows never let me down. I went to the lowbrow. It's right by my section. And I had andouille. And then I had some duck fat fries, the dirty ones. Because I'm clearly on a diet. Uh, highly recommend it. I was looking at the other food options at that arena, though. And... You can say goodbye to generic arena food. The everything there, they weren't lying about it being fresh. It's restaurant quality food. You're, you're paying a couple dollars more in some cases, but you're getting, you're not getting a DiGiorno pizza and some canned nachos. You're getting good food. And if you look at me, you can tell, especially those who have the view of my chins right now, you can tell that I'm a man who knows his food. My one year at culinary school before I dropped out was really. Made my opinions great. Um, I don't think there's any players I didn't enjoy tonight. I don't really want to criticize any players. I don't like Kufus in the role he's playing, but he had a good game. Um, Willie didn't. Willie probably needs to assert himself a little more. I, I'm not worried about him, but he probably does need to do a little bit more on the he will side Andrew Wiggins that guy is gonna be a star who should I criticize someone wants me to criticize a player I don't know who to criticize um, James Anderson was terrible tonight um, Cole Aldridge apparently played tonight 12 minutes good for him I, <laughs> I honestly did not even recognize him from way up in the nosebleeds but I am happy for him nonetheless um who else on the other side I already mentioned Gorgie Jang I am really looking forward um someone wants to know why I keep calling him someone uh earn the right for me to say your name yeah, Flalo wasn't great tonight. There were a couple times where I noticed, which I know is kind of a knock on him, he stopped ball movement, but he wasn't the only one guilty of it when we were struggling tonight either. And I don't think it really hurt us. Flalo is a pretty harmless player to me. He's He can stop the movement at times, which isn't entirely harmless, but overall he's kind of knows his role, it seems. At least for now. Maybe I'll hate him by the end of the year. Um, if I had to pick a player of the game... We had th three candidates. Uh, four if you want to include Ben. Boogie, Rudy, Matt Barnes, and Ben. But I think I'm going to give the nod tonight to Matt Barnes because I think he did the most to change the momentum of the game. He's doing a good job of dictating it. He can make some dumb mistakes like the rest of them at times, but I think he was the general out there tonight. I've liked Garrett Temple. He hasn't done an spectacular or anything but he's 
Dave's done all right. I have no complaints about him thus far or his stats tonight. It was eight points, five boards. Eh, won't complain. Um, I just missed some sort of comment about talking into the camera. I'm trying to do away with my bad habit. I noticed last episode I spent, uh, which I was just doing as I was talking, and I'm doing it right now on purpose, but I noticed, yeah, it was looked like Jack Sparrow staring off into the abyss. I'm trying to fix that. Oh, if DeMarcus Cousins was a Taco Bell item, which one would he be? That is a good question. I didn't see who asked, but whew. Trying to think, what's the MVP of Taco Bell items? I, I think I gotta go with. I'm gonna go with the Chalupa, because I feel like the Chalupa is the MVP of the Taco Bell menu. If not that, the Crunchwrap Supreme. Um, I'm gonna go with Crunchwrap Supreme actually, because Crunchwrap Supreme is a very diverse food. You can eat it on the road. You can eat it at home. It's a breakfast item. It's a lunch item. Um, I mean, I I. I don't think I need to elaborate anymore. It's pretty obvious the ways DeMarcus Cousins is like the Crunchwrap Supreme. That was a very good question. I forget who asked it, but it was a very good question. Um, I'll send you a prize in the mail. Other than that, let's see. What I missed in the game. We got free Jamba Juice in the game. I actually wasn't in my seat when we earned it, so I don't know how we earned free Jamba Juice, but we did earn free, free Jamba Juice, everyone in the arena. So whoever allowed that to happen, thanks. Perhaps someone can tell me how that happened. Because I don't know. I'm very prepared for the show, as you can tell. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I didn't cover. Is there anything else I didn't cover, Periscope people? Um, road trip? Yeah, we got a week and a half before we're back in that beautiful new arena. Um, it didn't take me forever to get out of the arena, but the the escalators. I did notice there's my one my one complaint, which you know they'll probably fix. The escalators kind of feed right down into the traffic that's exiting. So if they're slow, the escalator just kind of pushes people together, and they are really gonna need to uh, they're really gonna need to fix that because. There's a lot of things that can go bad if you got people just going into an escalator, especially if that traffic ever stops. Oh, oh, Deuce Mason, he had a question. I missed, I'm sorry, Deuce Mason. He's one of my biggest fans. What was your question again, pal? Answer isn't up in the ceiling. Yeah, I'm trying to fix that. I am well aware. Oh, how much I love you? Um, You have to earn my love, Deuce. I'm sorry, but I'm not just going to talk about it just to make you feel good. I, I'm a straight shooter. The... What else? Yeah, going in and out of both the concert and the game at this new arena has been pretty easy. Today, I actually bust into the arena, so I can't say I drove. I... I live far away so i bust in from woodland and that was the way to go i think if i ever need to do that if any of you are in the woodland area i believe it's west sacramento and davis i'm not paid by yolo bus but i highly recommend doing that um heuristic lineup he must be a new listener he is saying that i should project a picture of deuce in the background i feel like me Maybe it would trick some people into thinking Michael Sarah was my co-host, and that's not a bad idea. Um, it would add to the awkwardness, which obviously uh, Deuce wanted me to know that, that wasn't a funny joke. Uh, the people have spoken, and I that actually broke the record for most hearts on Periscope. So I don't know what you're talking about. Did I miss anything? Matt Barnes is an MVP candidate. I'm not sure. Um, 
you know, I guess I don't have a good argument against it. Uh, Kawhi Leonard's looking good. I'd probably go Kawhi Leonard, Matt Barnes, and Russell Westbrook at this point, and then Boogie fourth. Who Boogie got some MVP chance today? I believe started in my section tonight. Um, as we as we're broadcasting, I want you all to know too that I just got a notification that Sacktown Royalty just got its nineteen thousandth follower. So congratulations, nineteen thousandth follower. Um, this show is already doing good for the account. I'm glad I could help. So with that said, I know I started talking about. Oh yeah, I did. I did declare Matt Barnes the player of the game. Um, I'm just making up sec segments as I go. Should I have another new segment? Uh, the only thing shorter than my hair is those curtains. Mm. That would be some pretty long hair. I think those curtains are about six inches, eight inches. You know, whatever. I I gave myself a fresh buzz today. I think I'm looking pretty good. You guys can be the judge of that. Um, just a note for the Periscope people. I don't know if you've done it. If you if you ask a question and I don't get to it right away, don't be afraid to spam it. They only pop up for like two seconds. So I'm not ignoring you. Sometimes I'm looking up or looking at a stat. So if I missed your question, feel free to spam it again. It doesn't bother me. It might bother the other viewers, but they aren't as important as I am. So that's fine. Again, I'm trying to get this show so I can maybe do it on Facebook Live or YouTube Live instead. And get some live Twitter interaction. Um, I think the next show, Tim might be joining me as a co-host if I can get out the logistics of that. And hopefully I'll get some guest co-hosts too. Um, you never know. It, it gets wacky on STR After Dark. Remember to give me your suggestions. I'm still waiting for a theme song for the musicians out there. I, I need a theme song. Whether it's just you singing into your phone or you have a band, give me a theme song. And I will put it at the beginning of the episode. It won't be on the Periscope feed, but it will be on the YouTube feed. In glorious HD-ish from my webcam. Uh, someone, I live in Calusa. I can't eat Chondos during every broadcast. But if I could, I would. Um, I got a nice picture. Someone mentioned the security robots. I got a nice picture of, I don't think it was Nightman. I think it was one of his uh, minions. And I got a cool little picture of him. Not with him, but of him. I thought it was cool. You don't always see a celebrity. I unfortunately saw Bryant from Sacktown Royalty today. I saw him in person. He saw Vivek and shook hands with him. So that was cool. We'll have to interview about him about that. Um, my, my fan heuristic lineup says that I'm going to hate him. I'm curious. I know he's watching. I'm curious why I am going to hate him. So he can speak now. I'm threatening him live on STR After Dark. And people are hearting that like crazy. Um, I think that's it. Unless there's anything else you guys want to talk about. <laughs> I'm... I might have to put this feed up on Periscope so you guys can see all the love I'm getting. Thanks for listening again. Again, give me ideas for segments you would like to see and whatnot. Hopefully I'll have a co-host next time. This one was kind of last minute since I got home at midnight. I thought it was such a fun game. I wanted to talk about it. I appreciate any feedback you have. I'm still trying to fix my tendency to look off into the abyss, so... Feel free to yell at me about that. If you have any complaints, send them to at Heuristic Lineup on Twitter. And he will gladly respond to them. So without further ado, thank you all for listening. And see you next time. I think I'll be able to do this after the next game on Sacktown Royalty After Dark. Oh, and send anything. You see the little, oh, the Periscope people don't, but the, uh, oh, wrong hand. Right here, you can see the hashtag for the show. Right here, you can see my Twitter. And I don't, I don't do this well. Right here, you can see the logo. So read Sackdown Royalty. Thank you and good night.